What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. We got a good one for you today, like my man Steve Harvey say. It's Adam Ray. This dude is so funny. A sexual being, a dynamo on film and television. The Juki Jesus. That's what they call him on the court when he's crossing people over, breaking them ankles. He's the best. I love this dude. He's on tour. Go see him, adamraycomedy.com. I'm on tour. I'm on tour. AndrewSantino.com. We're adding a bunch of dates. I think we just added Dallas. We're doing Vancouver. Uh, I'm going to do Lake Tahoe. I'm going to be in uh, Niagara Falls. But next weekend, I'm at the Irvine Improv, Southern California. Let's go. Show up. Show out. I don't know when I'm playing Southern California again in a whole weekend like this. And then at the end of the month, uh, I'm going to be in Vegas at the win, baby. Come out, Las Vegas. But next weekend, Irvine Improv, Southern California, andrewsantino.com, andrewsantino.com to check for those dates. They're changing, adding all the time. Enough rambling from the old red-boned idiot. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all of my guests, but I mean this one especially today. It is the return, the long-awaited return of the new LeBron shoe having, <laughs> the bracelet watch wearing, Shabbat shalom. glasses on, hair slicked, ACDC, sexy gray, off black jeans. Can I say that? Yeah. Freshly shaved, freshly trimmed, buzzed oh, it'll face. It'll go during the podcast. And a nice, thick wiener, Adam Rip. It's circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Ray, thank you for being here. Great a to sweet be back. Prince. We've known each other for pro oh, close to two decades. Oh um, man, back. I mean, back to the uh, Cal State Irvine. No, no, the it, Robbie no, Picard. It was it, it was um, UC Irvine. UC Irvine shows in a bar. And let me tell you something, they were bad, <laughs> and we were bad. We were awful. But you know what, dude? There those was something were, there. Those were survival days. Yep. I talked to somebody the other day about how when somebody says, uh, oh, uh, Rel Battle. Yeah. Rel was like, isn't it funny that a culmination of your career is podcasting now, too? That's a good Rel voice. Is that pretty good? Let me try it again. Santino, isn't it weird that a culmination of your career is like in a podcast? Is that good? Is there that Rel? Is. That's it, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, uh, it is wild. And I was like, all that shit adds up, though. That show, when I used to do The Shack and Playa, like all those bullshit little tiny, and they're not bullshit because I'm mocking them, I'm just saying like tiny throwaway shows where sometimes no one shows up and we cancel. Remember I had a show at the Santa Monica, what was it called? Uh, Bre no, not Brew House, that was in Westwood. No, no, it was called Santa Monica Bre Brewing Company or oh, something like that. Oh, yeah. It was under the freeway. Yes. Remember? You know it's a good show if it's under the freeway. <laughs> Is there glass there? Come on in. <laughs> well, there is. Those shows are so necessary. And when I building blocks don't hear, you know what those shows uh, signify? The commitment. God bless you. The commitment to to what you're trying to uh, build, and and your commitment to the craft, if yeah. you will. And and the fact that we were like, oh, we're gonna drive to UC Irvine, fucking spend half of the show trying to find a way to park there. Yeah, and then have students be like you look like you're too old to be here and they're like i'm on the show i'm really funny and they go well you don't look like you and you're like you're you're eating up my tell me a joke and i'll let you into the show and you're like dude you're like let me just give you money and let me in <laughs> yeah, please. if i give you 20 dollars, will you let me in <laughs> i just poured some uh eagle rare for me and the boy cheers and oh lachaim thank you lachaim is it what do you do you, i feel like you have a cheers i always feel inadequate when i'm at some sort of celebratory gathering and I and and there's a nice group and you go like this and I always want to have a couple like locked and loaded of like yeah, you, to the boat to the it, well, here's one uh, um, uh, nuts and butts uh, uh, ruts and sluts cuts for futs <laughs> ah, I think I heard a nuts to butts in there nuts to butts <laughs> cheers baby I don't have one I gotta get one oh, mm. oh. go for the soul go for the soul isn't that, isn't that good? All these glasses. I gotta don't, get don't me. Don't take that because that's the last one. Oh, I'm, t I'm taking it. Take it home. I'm that honestly, guy. You can, honestly, if there, I think there's another one up there somewhere. You can oh, have that I'll one. go on andrewsantino.com and order myself a whiskey ginger glass. And while you're at it, I go right into an ad. <laughs> and while you're at it, use promo code. No, you know what? Uh, I'm that guy, though, that took things from 
I mean, still do from from sets. You know, you have cl- uh, uh, klepto, klepto. No, although I did steal when I worked at Albertsons in high school, I stole a lot, and then they Ooh. installed cameras. And by the way, you made that face like, oh, you, would you steal money? You're a no, bad no, boy. No, 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 like deodorant, toothpaste, single mama Ray could afford those, but not like the good ones. By the way, let's shout out to Puddin' real hard right now yeah. on the show. Yeah, that's Adam's mom, one of my. Biggest one, supporters. What do, what do I want to say? One of my flames. It's one of the loves of my life. She joined OnlyFans just so it wasn't weird for Santino's lover Who's to Who's the top see- subscriber for her? <laughs> Who donates the most? Put is the best. She is a yeah. uh, shout out to the put out there. Thanks, man. Keeping it, keeping it real low key, doing her thing. She loves you. And you know what, dude? Uh, Every time you're up in Seattle, she's like, you know, let him know he can stay here. I'm like, you're not fucking him again. How funny, honestly, though? If you I, did well, take- I don't, no, 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 I don't, I would never stay. Right. I, I would sleep with her, but I would never stay over. <laughs> yeah. That's rude. It's your, it's your mom. Yeah, yeah. I got to go back to the hotel. But it is cute. It's so cute that your mom does say that to you every time if I want to stay there. It's like. And she doesn't offer it to everyone. No, of course. Well, dude, some of our friends you wouldn't want in your childhood home. Bro, spring break, sophomore year of college at SC, I brought eight of my friends from the frat home. My mom and uh, my stepdad, George. We're celebrating today their 20th wedding anniversary. Are you, are you seriously? Yeah. yeah. And well, can they, we uh, call her in a second and say uh, congrats? Of course. Yeah. I just got off the phone with George. He pitched me a couple bad movie ideas. God bless him. You t- by the way, we want. <laughs> I w- I'm not to cut you off again, but we do need to get into that because yeah. we've talked before about bad movie ideas from George. Oh, yeah. And he's had a plethora of these <laughs> yeah. things. And I love that he's still throwing darts. He's trying. He's like, all right, so Sandra Bullock, Denzel Washington, they're on a ship in space. And see and COVID's back, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a new variant. See, yeah, COVID and, made its way to space. <laughs> How? It's in the movie. Yeah, yeah. But he, uh, 20, 20, twenty years, and I brought uh, eight uh, friends home. They went. I think this was the first year they got married, and they first like vacay. And so I brought these eight friends home to the house, and uh, it was such a cool thing. I rented a van. We went to at, at the time. Um, my girlfriend's family had a cabin uh, on a, a Orcas Island, I believe, and so Ooh. we went there. Uh, we went to the Pikes Market. I did a bunch of Seattle shit. Uh, you know, uh, went to a, an M's game, and one of my buddies jerked off on my mom's computer. What? And on it? To it? used it jerked but there off. was but left jerked off with it yes yeah. he didn't jerk off on the computer there was evidence oh no yeah and that's Buddy. how we yeah what's Is this it? guy's name let's call him out big time i'll say his first name put jeff, him on blast he just got a promotion <laughs> jeff you know who you are you, you know what you did you do <laughs> that is so nasty. You can't jerk off at your buddy's house on his mom's. And comp. it became a running joke. But then it was the first time. It was Not almost funny. like it was almost. Did, did people ever say like when I played basketball with some of the older kids in fifth and sixth grade and some, and my you know my mom you know just you know historically a little busty right and there was a kid named Jason Potts who was in eighth grade when I was in fifth grade. Jay Potts. Jay Potts. This kid smoked cigarettes in the sixth grade was so fucking cool. Love him. He was the first guy to tell me my mom had big ass titties <laughs> and mean it. And I hadn't heard that because, you know. They call, I'm, yeah, they call her the bat. You know yeah. that, right? <laughs> like, here come putting the bat with them big ass titties. And he made jokes about fucking her to me in the sixth grade. And I was just like, oh. Like, and I got like defensive about it. The same way I got defensive when my boy Jeff jerked off, used her computer. And so then it became a running joke, but I couldn't find any funny in it because I was just like, dude, use your imagination. Go to the bathroom. I was like, my mom does business on that. And he was like. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, if you're gonna jerk off on someone's computer, you know, like catch it in something, sock, I, t- towel. something. I mean, just like the fact that there was like, what was your thing when you were a kid? Without getting too explicit, what was your rag? Was it like, uh, you know, um, you didn't shower, shower, oh, big shower guy. Yeah. See, I it never, took me a while to even get. I never to that. tugged in the shower. I didn't like it. Oh, really? You know, people are like, oh, the water on your back, all that stuff. It's just, I would lose concentration because I really enjoy showering. Yeah. That I'm like, I need, I want to be washing. Yeah. It was kind of like sex in the shower. I don't like, I don't want to have sex in there either. Not the best. There was also this. Uh, it's this, not comfortable. There was a, a neighborhood dog that had like a real wet mouth. And so that was like the main. You had sex with a dog in the shower? These are jokes. <laughs> Adam. Beast- Let's talk about bestiality for a minute though. Oh boy. There's an area of Washington state. Called Enum Claw Washington. I know it. We've talked. Maybe did we talk about this? Did Enum we? Claw. Enum Claw. No, you probably just heard about because it, it was national news. Oh, okay. But a guy uh, banged a horse there and died. No, no, the horse banged him. <laughs> yeah, that guy didn't bang anything. That horse took control. A thousand percent. He was a bottom. The guy. I've, I've heard of this. You have. I've yeah. heard this story. There's a couple. 
there was a while before Seattle became the metropolis that it is that there, these are the stories that were giving us a name. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, Washington. I've t- I talked. You know, I just did. See, when I called you. We were we were FaceTiming when I was up at the Needle. Crushed it. And I did S- Seattle and Portland. And Washington is this thing I couldn't explain to people that Seattle is this. You know, a a, a very well established major metropolitan area, but the state of Washington is yeah. remarkably different from oh, the yeah. city of Seattle. Yeah. It's uh, old boy country. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's spitting, hitting, shitting, and clitting. Oh, there's Wenatchee where it's like, hey, you can you can talk to a black guy, it, it, but I don't <laughs> want you marrying him. I mean, that's maybe a little far-fetched, but there is- No, no, that's pretty. That's probably on par for some places. There, a thousand percent. And every pocket of the world has that- Of course. What do you mean? Here in, I'm sure here in Southern California, there's that- A that thousand exists. percent. I mean- But everybody has a dip in. Yeah. Every, everyone's got like- That's a like, really funny observation. Everyone's yeah. like, oh yeah, dude, it's uh, F-250. It's <laughs> jacked up too. It's got, um, what I did, I, I fucked up the fuel injection line. I put it on lifts and yeah, shit. Yeah, my, Tra- my boy Travis actually is the one who installed that. He actually works at the fireworks stand. Uh, have you been to Boom City? <laughs> Boom City out in uh, Boom Tequila. City. By the way, Boom City is a fireworks stand. It is. In every no, part of the country though. Oh, Boom City was where we went for fireworks. Yeah, that's gotta Two be hours in Wisconsin. North. I think I've seen Boom City in Wisconsin. Went to Boom City for the first time, seventh grade. Uh, my buddy Jonathan Stevens, dad, Lee Stevens, drove us up. And We're given a lot of uh, f- uh, federal names here. <laughs> That's great. Lee Stevens would love the shout out. Lee Stevens used to have a mantra because he drove a Subaru Outback. And he, the door, the right side back door was always a little wanky and janky. So if you slammed it too hard, he was concerned it was going to fucking fall off. So he always would go, easy on the door, please. Every fucking time to where we go, easy on the door, please. That was his mantra. That poor guy. He just wanted to keep a door. <laughs> he did, man. You guys were Compl- so mean. I, we were dickheads, yeah, okay, man. Okay, yeah. Lee. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, I, uh, money is just it's, it's money to fix the door. You're such fucking assholes, dude, looking back. Teenage yeah, kids are, yeah, are And slam the door. Shit. Yeah. But, but would never slam it on purpose. Just would forget. And I remember one time our friend Avery slammed it and he fucking lost it. I mean, it was so funny because you also seeing your buddy's dad lose it is like just <laughs> funny because dad's getting angry is funny. I, except that like when you see the dads go down a YouTube rabbit hole of dads fighting at high school sports games in the Come stands. On. It's sad but hilarious because, I mean, we played sports. We, we remember those times. It was like, and of course, maybe there's a part of me that, you know, because my dad left, I'm watching just to see a dad fight for something. And so, um, <laughs> thank you for laughing You're at that. sad, yeah. sad boy. And so... Uh, and so Lee Stevens Still would- waiting for you to show up to the game, Pop. <laughs> That's why you play intramural sports as a grown man. You hope your dad is just going to walk into the gym at one point and just go, proud, and do that slow clap. Like, oh, what's in his the name corner. From- yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, what's his name from, from Rudy? You know, the- like, even- What do I kind of think of his oh, name? Um, uh- the guy, Rock. What he had the show named Rock. Yeah, what is his name? The, the, cu- the custodian guy for the field, right? Yes, what is his name? God, that's a- Yeah, and he was clapping was so- something Rock. So diligently, yeah, the way yeah, he claps. Yeah. I have to look it up now because we that's have to. That's so funny, by the way, that that's why I played for that moment. I'm trying to do this bit now about seeing Mrs. Doubtfire two weeks after I uh, my folks split and how how I uh, I was sad. Charles Dutton. Charles Dutton. Yeah, Chuck Dutt. And how I was sad because you know two weeks prior to the Mrs. Doubtfire was painted as this hilarious comedy in the trailers. It was like, what happens when Robin Williams? Right. For most kids, yeah, it's a good wackadoo. He's dressed up like a woman. For yeah. you, it's like. That man is being ripped away from his kids. The opening <laughs> scene is Sally Field being like, I can't do this anymore. It is, it is intense when you look back. <laughs> oh, yeah. So many of those films when we were kids were like really, really sad messages. Heavy themes. Like, I can't believe it was this dark. Heavy themes. And Robin is so just, you know, kind and taps in to the emotion to where you don't even really understand how sad it is. And the idea that he's wearing, that he's dressed up as a woman is so funny. But if you're two weeks removed from similar fights, Tough. Sally Field's playing my mom and I'm sitting there going, and my buddy's like, dude, are you crying? And I'm like, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then- It's so funny, I can't stop crying. And I, and I was trying to do this bit about then like, yeah, seeing, like, <laughs> seeing that it's funny, but then also being like, oh, dad could have dressed up like a fucking British That's all you lady. need to do, dad. That's all, you know, dude, there were wig shops everywhere, dude. <laughs> Pie to the face, <laughs> to hide from child services. Hey, lip. I mean- uh, honestly, yeah. uh, one of the one of the best because I was always a fan. Look, I'm a dumb guy. I'm not a smart man. I never you're really like. Uh, no, I, I don't, don't know, know. Adam. <laughs> dumb guy over here. Yeah. No, I, mean, I just don't. I just don't. I just don't. I, so I get deep enough in my own noggin 
I go deep into the tunnel of chaos. Yeah. So when I watch a movie, I I miss comedies where it's brainless and it's like mindless and fun and I you buy into it. Norbit. Oh, love. Such a good move. <laughs> Dude, I get a I just want to buy in. I just want to buy in. Yeah. Like 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 Mrs. Doubtfire. Clearly anybody with a brain would be like, that's the dad in women's I mean, it's like yeah. so obvious. Yeah. But I like buying in. We Me don't too. make movies anymore where you buy in. Now yeah. they have to have proof for everything. Oh, I get so you. Like you see how this worked was. Yeah. And you're like, what do you mean? Just fucking just make belief. Mm. I want it to be insane. Yeah. The hangover was like the last movie we saw where you legitimately were in because you were like, this is believable, believable enough. Believable enough. I but don't also have, insane. Don't have to justify every move. No. Why is there a tiger? But how the tiger get in while they were asleep? Who they wouldn't hear a tiger? Yeah, exactly. I want to be able to buy into comedies again like we used to when we were kids. Great call. And it didn't matter that they didn't have proof and exposition for everything. Billy Madison, Ace Ventura. Like this that is, guy. Yeah, the like, list can go little, dumb and dumber. Is, I mean, the list goes on and on over like we bought in. Yeah. And it didn't matter. There was a ton of like, yeah, from a from a from a story standpoint, you're like, well, there's holes, but you're like, well, I don't, what do I, what do I give a fuck? This is yeah. a fake. It doesn't exist. Yeah. I don't know who said this. Somebody one time goes, I don't like when they explain time travel in film because it's not real. You know, when they do that, they're like, how could the time travel work? If you didn't have a, uh, uh, an, an Enigma four cell confused, it's like, it's not real. Yeah. It, of course it's not, it, It'll it doesn't never make be sense real. because it's not real. Well, yeah. it's going to be real. You think we're working on it. Watch this. We disappear for five minutes. I come back and I have jizz all over my face. I'm like, what am I that's where you went. Jesus, you could have gone back to I the dinosaur. Your buddy. No, I didn't want him to hit all over your mom's computer. That's. Amazing. I was trying to save your mom's Dell. That's amazing. It might have been, dude. Do you remember that when the Dell guy got caught smoking pot? Yeah, that was. My dad was so legitimately like. I remember vividly my dad being out. like, "What a piece of shit." Yeah, and I was like, even then, I was like. He he smoked pot. Also, the guy looked like he was like get a fucking bell, dude. Yeah, you don't think that guy was like when they said cut was like you know you mind if I hit it again? <laughs> like, again, yeah, dude, I'm high the whole shoot. Yeah, no, honestly, you you employed a guy that clearly it was a server like you're getting a Dell, dude. Do you know how many times he was like you're getting a whip it? Oh, sorry, <laughs> what did I do? What's the line? They're like, dude, just fucking. Did you it's ever two do whip it? Yeah, love. Oof. Wow, did I used to love them in high school. A quick little hit of, I mean. It's just a little, it's just a little fun for the brain, a little dance. You, the Never Ending Story theme song is what I think of when I think of a whip it. Wow. Turn around, look at what you see. <laughs> it's just like 15 seconds of that. And You're goes, flying on a dog. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Dude, that was what a, uh, Falcor? Falcor. Oh, but also for a second. At some point, I was like, "Is it a dragon or is it a dog? Is yeah. it a dragon dog?" And then, and I was a kid. The I didn't know if, if he was a boy or a girl. A Treyu. I never knew if a Treyu was a man or a woman. When I was a kid, that was how progressive that movie was. That was before gender norms. A Treyu was breaking all those fucking rules. Yeah, he was a girl guy. Yeah, girl guy. Yeah. That they kind of were evasive about his gender. Oh yeah, they didn't want you to know. No, it was kind of cool. Because then I think that's why they wanted kids to be like, "Do I want to fuck that? What is it?" Yeah, that's why I got we... horny. <laughs> My buddy's like, "That's a dude." I'm like, "Whatever." With the lights off, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then there's and then there's the kid who tells the whole story or who's reading the book, and he gets tossed into dumpsters. He's getting bullied. Oh, dude! Not even gonna see that anymore. Not gonna see kid nope. fucked with tossed in a dumpster also how ominous was that scene in this thunderstorm in the library when he's like that library was so whimsical give me and a creepy. name yeah and then she shows up would have <sighs> been great there's got to be a porn somewhere where like she then shows up because she's i think a kid she's a kid princess the never-ending whores we are we the we never are never ending, ending hori hori yeah story of whores starring robert ori Oh my God, in all of his glory, butt naked on the front, dick out. That's the box. Buy it now on DVD. The never ending Hori story. I met Robert Ori at a Laker game once and I was starstruck. Did you give him a kiss? Had to. What an underrated ball player. N not that I'm saying that he was, not, maybe not his time, he but. He gets his due cred, but. Some of the young people are never going to know that name. Oh, man. I'm my dad right now. You know what I think is very cool is that I saw. I think you posted a clip, or I just saw the clip, of big-time NBA players that are, like, coming to your shows, tweeting about you, whatever, where I'm like, oh, oh this Caruso, is... Oh, Caruso came from the Bulls, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I mean, one of many, but, and we've talked about this at great length where it's yeah. like, that's, that's not what we're doing it for, but truly never will not be cool and will never not be even, you know, cause we were kids and we, we you looked up to some athletes. They're larger than life. And so now to be physically too. a part of your life is crazy. It is. But I mean, even when you and I went to the, um, Lakers, uh, bowl game and then BJ Armstrong was behind us. That picture is etched into my brain. Yeah. I literally was like. To you, I was, we were and we were stony baloney. Oh yeah, I was off my head. I think I pushed for that picture too because you were like, I don't want to bug him. I did and I not like, want to bug him. Dude. And I was like, I know you. I know you're. This is also he, he's literally above my bed. Yes, there was a picture of BJ Armstrong literally above my childhood bed. Amazing. I was just at home, took a video of it. It's on my Instagram. Amazing. But I just, I, I, I just was like, that's him. But I don't want to be the guy. And then the whole. Well, you were also if you're stony, you, you don't want to fuck up and say the wrong thing too. Correct. Yes, you know like, what's so funny? Hey, dude? BJ, do you ever eat at BJ's where you're getting a BJ? I'm sorry, man. He's just yeah. like, you, 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 you ever BJ? You're... And then the other person next to him was like, what? I'm like, give this guy a BJ. And then I just fucking fall down. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't want to. Hey, I, who's I, the fucking buzzkill who wants to suck his dick stuck from his friend? You're like, hey, man. <laughs> and then I come back with two hot dogs and my hot dogs. And they're like, oh my, get out of here, dude. Damage is done. No, you know what, though? Because I here's my, here's my conscious level. I have a remarkably marginal amount of fame is a wrong word but like notoriety in the well I, i've shaved i have notoriety in our comedy world like yeah and i have fan people know oh yeah me, oh yeah and i people are sometimes like i know you don't like when fans yes i do oh yeah for the record i do like when somebody comes and says hi i've said this on shows people think because i kind of have a scowl a natural scowl that people yeah. are like oh, he's kind of a don't talk to him but i love when fans come up and say what's up but just like with bj you gotta just do it and then get out. Get out. Yeah. Like I, I respect him. I like him. I don't want to be annoying. So you, I just want to go, Hey man, big fan. Yeah. And I think all I said was, in fact, I know exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. I, said I was about to call you out on that. I was you like, Hey man, I'm a Chicago kid. I fucking love you, dude. Great. And he was like, yo, thank you. Oh, thank you, bro. And then he gave me a dap and he, and he said, you want to do a pick? And I was like, is that chill? Cause I didn't expect to pick. Cool. And then I got a little self, self and I was, cool, and then cool. I got out of there as fast as I could. But I think that's the move. Like when somebody comes up to me, I'm, so, I love saying hi. Yeah. But it's just weird sometimes when somebody's like pushy or drunk and they're like, let me tell you a joke, dude. Yeah. And you're like, come on, that man. That sucks. Just say hi and can we fuck off? Now, how are you if you see somebody, like I just went to a Kings game with a buddy of mine and Al Michaels was in front of us huh. and Love. with, and was um, friends with my buddy's buddy who was, there. they were all that. So when we got in between periods, we're all now in a circle just hanging. So I was like, and at first I was like, holy fucking shit. He was like, yeah, I, that's. Al Mike was part of the family. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, uh, he was like, I'll introduce you. I was like, yeah, if it fucking comes up, whatever. So we talked to his uh, son and, and his brother. And then we get in and, and uh, I'm wearing a uh, Mariners hat and Al Michaels is wearing a Seattle Kraken hat. So right away, there's just a little like is that. Is he from Seattle? No, but he just was wearing a Kraken hat. I told you I wanted to pick up one of those hats because the colors are so dope. I'll get you one. And so Thank he, uh, so I shake his hand and I just, I had, man, I had some cocktails, some soda pops. And I, <laughs> so I already felt like I was like, I'm, go, I'm opening with a joke. And I don't know if, I don't know if it bombs uh, or I don't care if it bombs. I'm just going to, I don't want to just go, big fan, man. So what's, what's your favorite all-time moment of oh, sports? Boy. So I just go, I go, Al. And then he goes, he goes, hey, I go, Adam. I go, I think we actually matched on Tinder a couple of weeks ago. And then, I, <laughs> and then I, before he can like really respond, I go, I'm just kidding. And then I go to shake his son's hand. He doesn't let go of my hand, holds onto it. He goes, no, no, no. We did. Oh my God! What a king! Awesome! And what then a I, move! And then I nervously laughed even harder, like, "Yeah, we fucking did!" And then cut, so, to, cut to the party is over, <laughs> and you're walking away, like, "Yeah." Everyone's like, "See you later, man." He grabs your shoulder. He's like, "We did. <laughs> you're coming back with me." You're like, "Oh my God!" I commit to the bit fully. I had to blow out Michaels. Oh man, that's How the are, song he sings when he comes. By the way, has to. Yeah, <laughs> I always thought about that with Sports Center guys too, where they go, dan -dan 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 -dan. Well, they, oh man, those old days. I don't watch Sports Center anymore because it's uh, not fun. I yeah. I miss the old like I, let them let them have some jazz, let them go off the rails. Mm -hmm. I liked it when it was goofball, wacky shit. I feel like it's uh, everyone's trying to make a mark. If you could be LeBron right now and stay in the league to play with your son, would you? If it's going to affect your legacy. I absolutely think he should do it for the sole purpose that, you know what, what Westbrook said the other night um, that, I, I, that I saw the clip online that like really st stood with me was, you know, people have kind of been booing him lately and people are kind of shitting on him a lot lately. Yeah. He's kind of getting a lot of flack. Yeah. And they're calling him Westbrook. 
you know, and all this shit. And I'll say this. So that's what sports fans do. It's part of the game. It is. But that being said, he did say a thing where he went to his son's parent-teacher conference or something. And this, the teacher was like, your kid won't stop saying his last name. He's a young kid. And he's like, Westbrook. I'm Westbrook. And he keeps saying it. Mm. And he, she was like, he's so proud. And Russ was like, I realized that it's like, yeah, man, my name means like, that's, that's, that's my family. That's my pride. Yeah. And so then he said, then it hurt me when fans are doing that because he's like, that's something that means a lot to me. And it's interesting because you're like, that's a little bit bigger than basketball or sports. Cause these guys are human. And people, I think people really forget that, that you're like, they're going to be flawed. They're going to fuck up. They're, they're not going to be everything you want them to be. Yeah. And also some things should be for them. So if LeBron wants to stay and play with this kid, who the fuck are you yeah. to tell him? To, I mean, like, I'm sorry, but like how every dad would give a body part to be able to enjoy a moment like that, watching their son grow in the game that you're in love with. Yeah. And then, play, I mean, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. What a moment. And by the way, let him have it, even if it is kind of like a little much. I don't fucking care. It's, cool. uh, it's a cool sports moment. They're humans. Yeah. That's, I think people forget. It's like, you're like, you're a basketball player. He's a dad. That's yeah. his child. You know how like you have a kid guy at home. You don't want to have that fucking amazing you don't moment. fucking want kid. that. Yeah. You fucking you dick <laughs> piece of shit. Some guy at the computer is crying right now. He's watching the potty. He's like, I do want that. I do want that. But my son's a washout piece of shit. I do think Tom's, I also, I also do think that there's something. He works at Costco and I can't even hook me up with samples. Yeah. I think there is something. What do you mean I don't get a family and friends discount? In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, if you're looking to make a website of any kind, whether you're selling something, uh, whether it's art, or you're distributing your opinions on the internet, uh, Squarespace is the place. I've spoken about Squarespace on this show very, very often. I love Squarespace. I've been using them myself for quite a long time. And I'm a not a so smart. I've told you I'm a stupid guy. And they have these templates that help you create amazing uh, websites to showcase your work, particularly if you're, you know, an artist and uh, you want to show off what you got. Um, it's uh, this all-in-one platform for building your own brand. You can grow your business online. These analytics are great. You can really see where customers are engaging, where they're coming from, no matter if it's products or you just want to tell people about how you think Mars is made a chase. Uh, it's incredible. They've got uh, all these inc these great features that I've talked about before. It's easy to, to create and, and monetize your content. And it uh, what it does is it fits it to your brand. Uh, they've got email campaigns. They've got video studio, appointment scheduling, uh, which is very easy and accessible. And they got uh, all your connected social media accounts grouped in one place. And those real-time analytics I told you about that are just incredible. That I think that I use the most to find out where people are, you know, searching my stuff for so I can find out where more fans are and direct traffic towards that so I can go go to that city you can see me live um, but do me a favor head over to squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial when you're ready to launch use the offer code whiskey to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain once again squarespace.com slash whiskey free trial if you're ready use that offer code whiskey to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain hey when that moment for intimacy arrives and your blood flow isn't the usual you know when the river is low the banks are high and the river is low. Whether you've been in a relationship for years or you're just getting something started, let me tell you something. 52% of guys age 40 to 70 get some form or experience some kind of erectile dysfunction. Not a big deal, okay? It happens to the best of us and, you know, statistically to the most of us. So it's more common than you think. And uh, the benefits of ED treatment can help you reconnect with your partner. Rediscover the joy of sex. All right, get that blood flow down there. Roman Ready is confidence personified. Roman is the best. The system is completely confidential, totally discreet. No logos or labels on the packages. It gets dropped off at your front door. Nobody knows what's going on in there. It's not their business. Mind your own business, Kevin. Nosy neighbor. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan if medication is appropriate, which it might be. They're going to ship it to you for free with two-day shipping. Come on, man. What do you want? The whole process is straightforward, convenient, discreet. Getting started is very simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey. GetRoman.com slash whiskey. Complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving the comfort of your own home. Complete that online visit today. Connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. Take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey today. If you're prescribed, you get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall. Roman ready. Ginger. I like gingers. Oh, uh, man, I had a buddy from high school at Costco once, and I tried to go back for seconds on samples when I was super baked over the holidays, <laughs> and he goes, dude, I just saw you. <laughs>
And I go, went, I go, we went to high school. He was like, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but this is Costco. Oh, dude, he wouldn't. I tried well, to they, they had 800,000 of these salmon oh, rolls. Oh, bro, it was such a, I respected him like putting the, the you know, He's like, whoa, whoa, boxing right. out. But, He's like, get in line, bud. <laughs> dude, like, a was, massive line. Yeah, it was a popular item. I'll give him that. But I do, The one thing I don't like about Costco is when people do that thing where they go, <laughs> it's like, you know, like crab legs at a dinner and someone's like, Costco. And you're like, I don't need to know. Where you got them from? Hilarious. I know. Because you're bragging about it like. So like, good. We can afford these and uh, we, we could have gotten better shit, but we got Costco. But yeah, was, also, <laughs> you're not good enough for us to. No. Nah, it's. Uh, <laughs> we got 900,000 crab legs that we have to eat by Wednesday morning or they all go bad. So let's go. Eat up. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't like that people throw Costco at you. Like, I'm not a fan. I'm a fan of getting a deal. I'm not a fan of people bragging about the deal. No. Just get the deal. Yeah. I don't like when somebody's like, you know, uh, you know. Costco, uh, half, yeah, half off. It's like, great, man. Just enjoy. You enjoy that internal. Got it. Get it. I'm not your enjoy fucking it. business manager. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, that's what I'm talking about, Adam. <laughs> we don't pay over half yeah. for old TVs. Fuck that. Speaking oh. of which, do you want a TV? We have three in the hallway here. Um, They're old. Yeah, I'll take one. If you need a TV, take I'm a not, TV. This is what I love about you two, and I think where you and I differ, where I need to pick up, and I always think of you when I- Come. <laughs> just let me have that we'll be right back <laughs> we'll be right back we'll keep it right here uh dr I, phil so i good. always want when i watch and i do watch dr phil occasionally mostly when i'm on the road that's what spurred my whole uh, uh the dr Philian. yeah just all the just impression and then during covid doing the uh you know live dr phil shows just taking somebody that's not you know, and I, it's why I did like a, I did a uh, Jay Leno show at UCB back in the day where it was like taking guys that are kind of not cookie cutter clean, but cleaner Pretty and clean. seeing a filthier version. So with Dr. Phil doing like a later show where, and I would have these people on Zoom, you know, five, 600 people asking advice and they'd be like, my kid doesn't like the sixth grade. I was like, well, he's a fucking moron. He needs to drop out <laughs> and start, you know, find the nearest glory hole. Okay. And, and actually, you know, he's struggling to find a purpose and, and that's partly on his slut mom you know and just like <laughs> go at him and people would laugh because i'm just doing i'm in full garb you, you know? don't want you don't expect phil you don't to be that. yeah because you, you never see, when you see him be a dick it's always pretty <laughs> tempered you know what i mean like totally he, like he's got he can when he's like nobody tells me what to who to put, put on my show but me yeah and it, it's like that's a that is him like flexing flexing but he's yeah. still very even keel of course because it's daytime you can't yeah. like there's a certain level you know, I, we're going to break that mold. You and I are doing an all a dirty daytime show. Oh, bro. Well, Wendy Williams kind of pushes the limits. She of does. All that stuff. I just want to pe- see people go harder in the paint before the sun goes down. 100%. That sounds like a Phil Collins lyric. It does. <laughs> go harder in the paint before the sun goes down. Before the sun goes down. I, I thought I saw, you've always had a great voice. Ooh. I thought I saw Phil Collins at the Grove once and went up to a guy. I usually have a pretty good thing of just, I've seen a lot of celebrities when I'm baked at the Grove. Larry King, Psalm, said, can I- uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Asked him if, uh, if um, he was, uh, what snacks he was getting. He goes, I'm with my nephew, do you mind? And I go, not at all. I just got interviewed by Larry King. <laughs> and then my buddy laughed and pulled me away. <laughs> and he just stared at me as I walked away. And what, then- other, what other dead celebrities have you seen at the Grove? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the list of dead celebrities. Abe Lincoln. Oh, he, uh, he, 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 I've seen him at the Apple Store twice. Was always there. Yeah. At the Genius Bar. He's like, what? what is a charger? They're like, get out. <laughs> it doesn't fit the new adapter. <laughs> um, no, but I wanted to say about mm-hmm. Westbrook getting shit from fans. Mm. I, what, I'm what, i split on this because I go, there's a part of the sports fan that goes, we pay your fucking salary with the tickets and yeah. the whatever, and yeah, yeah. and we and you're playing because of us. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. But you, it doesn't mean you get, there's a line oh, of wait, what. This light just went out real fast. Oh, yeah. There's a ghost. This has happened a few times. I'm telling you there's I a ghost. I do believe in ghosts. No, this is a ghost. Oh, cool. Hold on. Back to Westbrook. Oh, oh no, Adam. I'm the guy from Ghost Hunters. <laughs> Come at me, bro. What's that? Zach Bagans. I love it. Come, Come on, ghost. Do something to me. Play with someone your own size. Shut the fuck up. That's He's a so, line from Zach, the show. Zach Bagans, you never seen this? No. Ghost Adventures? <laughs> what a show. Back to Westbrook. Uh, gets a lot of shit. Yes, it's welcomed, it's understood. Some of it goes too far, for sure. There's some of these clips where people are yelling shit that's inappropriate. You always try to keep in mind of the kids. We were once those kids. I always thought it was funny when I heard adults drunkenly scream and swear, but that's probably because I just, you know, 
we had that comic brain already, you know, flowing and juicing at that time. Never said that. Uh, and so, uh, but so, but you try to be cognizant of like kids at games when you're like, yeah, it's polite. Get fucking, you're missing a good game. Say something funny so the kid can laugh. Don't just scream, fuck you, you dumb ump, you know? Um, and so, uh, so I look at Westbrook getting that, that uh, verbal yeah. assault and I go, man, it harkens me back to like my high school b-ball days where I used to get assaulted. And I go, and I'm not getting paid. And at that stage, I was like, man, I just, I understood it was a part of the game. And I was able to like, Look, a few nights, yeah, I definitely went home being like, all right, that guy called me Jew boy. One guy called me And fucking- I'm sorry, but I told you I didn't mean to say that. You, you've kind of held on to this. I said it one time at the game. It was the way you said it. It was the way you hit boy. I went know. Jew boy. I mean, what, what, why is that bad? You were wearing a full orthodox robe. You had, oh well, okay. You, I know you don't own that, so you brought it to the game. Borrowed it. Just for that moment. Borrowed it, gave it back. Also, like, you were performing a circumcision. Okay. Like, the whole crowd was rabbis that night. I think you paid a bunch of rabbis to come to the game. 36. <laughs> There's no... That's a lot of rabbis. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with That's a Lot of Rabbis here on NBC. <laughs> That's a lot of rabbis. No, but, you pay, but you're right, though. You, you... I don't know. I, I'm asking you, how much is... Do you, do you go, dude, fucking deal with it. For him to go, you're making fun. West Brick? I, no, I'm like, I, dude... I think deal with it is right. Deal with it is right. But also... He's human. There's a part, there's a part of us that I think gets lost in the idea that they're like. They should have to just deal with it, right? You work for me. Oh, well, that is stupid. I don't. But it is that. weird that we do this thing where you watch these specimens, these, these athletic specimens, these like insanely talented yeah. people that, you know, they, they've showed this a few times. Where like the shittiest NBA player is better than the best guy you've ever met in your life. But people don't seem to conceptualize that unless they see it live. Yeah. Go watch a pickup game. When I when Baron Davis had his league and I would go see them sometimes, oh, yeah. dude, I, I would go watch those guys and it and none of those guys were dude none of those guys were in the league and they were all fucking unreal and none of them were in the league right and then you see league guys the shittiest league guy quote unquote according to Joe Schmo on the couch is is a killer is unbelievably talented yeah. and you're like the level is wild to me so for us to be like get it together it's like there's a mental aspect a physical aspect mm. there's so many things that go into that stuff i don't think people can conceptualize and nor could they ever that's yeah. fine yeah. i don't even know yeah but i think i think there's maybe it's because i've gotten to know a couple athletes that you're like they're just different than us yeah and maybe they should be treated as such instead of like i could do that it's like do it do it Actually, at once a game, someone should go in for a couple of minutes on every sport. Oh, one thousand! Just let him throw them in there. I think that throw a regular guy in there. I think, dude, those rock and jock games on MTV oh had it right God. from the get go. Yes, involve more. I think during most NFL games, once a game, they should cut to the same way. I don't know if Albert some guy getting CTE live, <laughs> that or getting him to call one drive. Or a One quick play. analysis, uh, drunk yeah. analysis. You cut to fucking Tony <laughs> Phillips in fucking Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa, Packers, Vikings, and they're like, Aaron Rodgers having the game of his life, four for four in the first two drives. The Packers are up 20 to nothing after, well, only two scores, but they somehow have 20 points. <laughs> and it's an amazing feat. We're not going to go to Tony Phillips live in Des Moines, Iowa. <clears throat> it's fucking crazy. Dude. All right, all right, all right. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> right back to the broadcast. <laughs> like he, yeah. And, and the guy in the truck is like, finish. switch back, switch back, switch back, switch back. Now, oh, but by the way, and then they can't, and they even tell him beforehand because they have a crew set up <laughs> the same way that Ellen would surprise people with like checks or prizes. They come to the house before. Yeah, they've yeah. set up with Tony where he, there was a moment when they set up where he was just like, "So you guys gonna cut to me during the game, or is it gonna be?" Okay, cool, cool. Three, and two, and I'm fine. one. No, no, no. This, and is, Tony? this is two hours prior. So he goes, and then he goes. So I'm cool to drink now, right? And they're like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Just have one. Hey, just, just, just know that when we cut to you, you know, your time will be decided mm -hmm. based on how fun. All good, all good. Hey, I'm pacing myself. I told my wife, this is, this is. I'm pumped. This is uh, all our friends are watching too. And then it's that moment. <laughs> Blacked out. I <laughs> damn it! And they just cut away, dude. Honestly, though, I pay extra. That's what I'm saying. I pay extra just to like one fan cut away. Oh god! You know what it should be? Donate. It should be a charity. It should be for charity, and all that money pooled to have some idiot call one, like one yes. one play. 
And get all that money and put it's it an, to charity. It's the same way rich people have these auctions where they buy, you know, a, a keyboard that was played by Paul McCartney for $10 million. I just went to a charity event. Very proud of. I awesome. spoke about it. But to watch... <clears throat> to watch... The bidding. Yeah, the bidding. And watch and how... And the items. Oh, boy. Oh, but not just the items. Just like, just the live bid. I've only been to a few of these things. And look, by no means am I a wealthy man can do any of that stuff. I don't get... The bidding is absurd. But three adults... Gave a hundred thousand dollars a piece, Ooh. and you hear that number, and you're like, "Holy fuck!" Yeah, I, t- I fucking I turned to my lady. I was like, w- "Is that guy a billionaire? How yeah. do you get a hundred grand just on like a Thursday?" Is wild to me. That's why, and you know what? Pro- yeah. Good for him. And also, it was for St. Jude's. It was great. It was awesome. Like su- I'm super proud that like we went to this thing and I helped yeah. out and we raised this yeah, money. Yeah, very cool. But also, I'm just I'm shocked that like, I mean, that's great. People give, and it's. But you're like, how, who has that kind of? That's so much money to just drop that number. Hundred G's, not like even think no, about it. Yeah, he like this, like yeah, I popped up, put it to my number. You're like, holy shit, bro! I used to go to. I was like, is there any more steaks? <laughs> Do you have we any can, more asparagus? We can take these home, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you do, do you have enough butter? Can we take one of the butters back? <laughs> by the way, at those events, they always have soft butter, and boy, oh boy, Santino loves I love soft for... butter. Now, I'm always come on, give me the bread. Give me on the bread. what? On the bread? Oh, on it. I... Well, first of all, I'll put butter on it. I'll put butter on you. And lick it right off today. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I just love soft butter. When they give you soft butter, you're like, what am I not going to fuck this up? Now show me the flip side. If you get hard butter, show me the face. Leaving. Give me the check. <laughs> Sir, you just got bread. Get, um, give me the fucking check for the waters. I'm out. Do you know if there's a local baseball field I can uh, get a quick game of stickball in with this fucking hard stick of butter? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on. I got. I quit two days at Fleming's, the restaurant in downtown LA, when I was. Wait, you used to work there. Two days. Oh, I never knew. And that. then quit because uh, because our friend got you the job. Saratella. Yeah. Well, we're we gonna say. It? Well, there you go. Yeah. And, Jesus Christ, and Adam. He, <laughs> Giving away feds all, we'll ble- all over We'll bleep it out. Yeah. So, uh, and the guy goes, and I'd done this a um, uh, couple of videos that he dug. and uh, um, Who's the guy you were talking about? His boss. Oh, okay. At Fleming's. And yeah. he was like, yeah, I saw some of your videos. I like them with this, whatever. And, uh, and so he hired me based, I think, on that and then my buddy's recommendation. And I just fucked up left and right. I had a few buddies in Seattle lie about restaurant references. You've never served before? No. And so Adam. I did a private party. I, I left the tray on the table. And then like, and then somebody was like, you got to go back and get that. And so I went back and I, and I picked it up and I was like, my bad for the tray, like interrupted the presentation. Oh my <laughs> and God. he goes, Hey, Hey, don't talk when you go in there. I was like, but I fucked up. He goes, just think it. Don't say it. I was like, okay, cool. Imagine he's in the middle. He's like, and you can see third quarter was our worst <laughs> quarter this year. My bad for the tray. Um, right. And it didn't get any better. <laughs> not far off. <laughs> yeah. And so then I go back out. And, I, and they're like, all right, do roll-ups and whatever. And then this guy, Monty, uh, <laughs> was training me. And, and I walk out there, and, uh, and he goes, all right, so now um, you know, bring, them, uh, bring them their soup and then whatever. And so I walk out, I drop off the soup, and I go, guys, enjoy the lobster bisque. It is, as the French say, great. <laughs> and then, and then uh, Idiot. just to, being a dummy, but trying to, you know, I'm just doing stupid fun. little things, trying to, trying to make them laugh. And he goes, uh, and I forgot the spoon. So the guy looks down, and he goes, oh, he goes, uh, I hate to be a. And I was like, can I get a spoon for the soup? And I recognize that I, that I forgot it. So then I go, uh, can I need you to see if you can make that work with the knife? <laughs> and then he goes, he kind of laughs. And I go, all good, dude. Spoon coming up. I go, Monty, Monty goes, hey, don't make jokes. Just go get the spoon. No, I'll make jokes. And then I go, I go, I was just trying to lighten up a little. I go, I'm just, you know, I'm just running stuff here and there. I, it's how I'm just trying to find some joy in this, you know? Yeah. And then he goes, all right, now you're going to bring him the dessert. Okay. The sh- and we have our famous Chantilly cream. And I, and I want you to bring it and say, hey, would you like some of our famous Chantilly cream topping, which is like a fancier Cool Whip, on the pie? And so I go, I go, cool, Chantilly cream. He goes, uh, say it for me real quick. I go, Chantilly cream. He goes, Chantilly cream. I go, Chantilly cream. He goes, Chantilly cream. I go, Monty, you're just putting your chin higher. I'm saying the same shit you are. He goes, and he, and, he, and, he, and he chastised me for not getting it right to where I was just like, bro, I go, I don't know what, do you just want to say it for me when we go out there? He goes, I think you'll get it when you get out there. I go, and you assholes want cream? <laughs> no, there. Dude, I fucking shitty scoops. Then I go back, head chef, this is all building for the, uh, this is all butter build. We get back there and he had little butter squares with the bread right away for Fleming's mm-hmm. classic steakhouse move. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I cut my butter squares improperly. They were poorly cut and he just dropped them down and he goes, what the fuck is this? And I was like, 
<laughs> and I, dude, my heart started racing. <laughs> and he just goes like this, new guy. And I go, what up? And he goes, the fuck is that? And I go, the bad butter square. He goes, no shit. And I just go, wow, dude. Oh, dude, he was so aggressive. I He's called, like, we take our butter squares really fucking serious uh, around. Oh, here. he did. He was, like, he was like, this is the opening to the meal, the opening to the night. The butter, the bread, they go together. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, man, we've all got that looming thing uh, on our phones, that credit card app you got on there. You don't want to look at it because you don't want to look at your balance. I know what that's like. At one time, I was in all sorts of debt. Depth. The depth of debt seems to be never ending. It's pretty awful. And last year, uh, you know, the pandy showed us a little bit of rough waters. And I got to tell you, you can take control of this debt with Upstart. Upstart is great. Uh, you can know exactly what to expect if you got multiple credit cards tracking all these balances. It's a nightmare. Due dates. Upstart makes things simple with mon- one monthly payment and one place. It's the easy way to get a personalized loan to pay off your debt all done online. It's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest, funding personal expenses. Over half a million people have used this. Be a half a million and one. All right. Upstart finds rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. You're not just a three digit number. You're a special, unique snowflake person with a five minute rate check. You can uh, see your rate up front for loans for $1,000 to $50,000. That's a lot of cheddar. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash whiskey, upstart.com slash whiskey. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. These loan amounts are going to be determined based on your credit income and other certain information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash whiskey. Take care of that debt. Hey, let me tell you something about Rothy's. The shoes on my feet. Not right now, not at the very moment, because I just got a brand new pair of Rothy's. I got these driving loafers. Look, dude, you don't see me as a loaf guy. I know that. But there's days when I'm out by the boat with my sweetie pie and my pipe in my mouth. But I do love loafs when I'm kicking it around the house. And they got these things called the driving loafers. I just got them. And they are so comfortable. I also got myself a pair of the RSO one, the Panther sneakers. Okay, they were nice. Some sneakers. The sneakers are very nice. Uh, but the loafer is what I was going for because I was like, I haven't had a pair of loafers in a long time. We used to have penny loafers, and I put the penny in there like a real dork. But Rothy's are so comfortable, dude, so comfortable. Um, be honest, I'd never heard of them before. And they said, let's link up. Sent me a pair, and I loved them. Uh, really comfy, not a heavy break-in period. It wasn't really tight. Some, some, sometimes uh, these casual dress, casual dress business, casual dress shoes get too uh, too tight on my footsies. Uh, but they're incredibly versatile. Uh, you can wear them, you know, dress down, dress up, whatever you want to do. Uh, and I got to tell you, they're uh, pretty wonderful. The sneaks are uh, knit with 100% recycled materials. Even the, even the sneaker laces are made from plastic water bottles, all right? All that stuff you're throwing in the ocean, they're putting it on your feet. Uh, the driving loafer was just named uh, one of Time's 100 Best Inventions in 2021 in the style category, calling it an ideal shoe for the late pandemic era. That's pretty incredible. And I tell you, they're nice. When I'm in the backyard with the dog throwing around a ball, I like to wear my loafs, dude. Those driving loafers are very comfortable. Uh, if you're still feeling skeptical about the shoes made from recycled plastic, try this on for size. Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us the chance to share this super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. Right now, you can get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash whiskey. Head to rothys.com slash whiskey. Snag a pair of men's or women's shoes for yourself or somebody else. All right? That's rothys, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash whiskey. Put something new on your feet. Make you feel good and the world. Ginger. I like gingers. This is what they're seeing. Imagine you light him up. You're like, you know, Fleming's isn't even a top 10 steakhouse of the chain steakhouses. <laughs> oh, the heckler him comic collapse. thing inside yeah. of me want to just lay into him. But I just was so, I needed this gig. I was still, you know, three, four days a week at Wolverine at Universal. And I was like, I need extra income. So that's why I was like, I'm going to do this restaurant job. And I need to ask you. Yeah. Did Bobby Lee ever visit you at Universal when you were in Wolverine costume? He claims he did and threw something at you. <laughs> He was like, we used to throw pennies at it or change. We threw something at Adam and he would Wolverine swipe them away. Like he, were, he was there with, with somebody and he saw you. He was there. If he threw pennies at me, I don't He's remember. He's like, he Wolverined them away and you deflected. And I go, that, I go you're, you're probably lying to me, Bob, but that sounds like something Adam would do is like have fun with it. Well, I, I mean, I definitely... People threw way more shit than you expect at these fucking characters, <laughs> so he's not wrong with that. What got thrown at me? Oh, bro! I also the the fucking hits. Old Japanese men would hit me with their umbrellas. No, just because. Okay. What? Why? <laughs> 
Why can we it... call them all up right now? <laughs> bro, yes. just fucking. Siri, call Japan. Bro, I would get hit. So then I would go borrow the squirt gun uh, that we had at one of these kiosks and I would light them up with these fucking <laughs> squirt guns that would shoot like 75, 80 mile an hour squirts. Right into these dudes? Yeah. Well, the payback. And I remember it was right near the Blues Brothers stra- stage where there was a bit, there was a lot of commotion, a lot of traffic, and I in full Wolverine would just fucking <laughs> boom, 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 boom. light them up. Oh, dude. And people would just laugh. And then my boss would come over and be like, What are you doing? Wolverine with a squirt gun? Yeah. When, when have you seen that? I was it's like, in the next couple of movies. It's coming up. <laughs> yeah. They haven't, they haven't come out yet. Uh, Bobby was there. I mean, Brett Ernst was there. I mean, uh, a lot of people would come visit and. I can't remember if Bobby threw. Shit. If he did, I wasn't looking. But I mean, I would always. I was, was just saying you shit. were always kind of you. Well, because nope. you're you're you 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 get it, dude. I'm not going to spoil <laughs> it now, but we're planning something. Do you talk to Glassman? Oh talked? yeah, oh yeah, okay, yeah. But he when we were talking on the phone, he was like, "Yes." He was like, "You know who you that. you know Adam will be in on it." I'm like, "Oh my god!" It was it was like an afterthought. Yeah. I was like, "I'm more worried about who's not going to be into it, right. or who's going to be like, oh, I'm going to bail." I don't want to do it. I, I mean, I feel like I got a pretty good your game threshold for being game and and for the comedy for the fun. You're the same way though, man. I mean, when you went on Kimmel for Punked, yeah, and we're like that truly that was like a big. I got taste. Yeah, but that was also like so funny and so like easier said than done to not want to have a little bit of an ego or a little bit of um. I don't want to look like a fool. Whatever. Oh, I look like such a fool. I was also chubby as shit. My penis looked so tiny in those speedos. It was like all the elements where I was like, I'm so you pu- still had those thoughts, yeah. But in a way where I was like, I just didn't give a fuck, yeah, because I was like, it's Justin Bieber and Ashton Kutcher, yeah, and Bieber at the time, oh God, it was so funny. He was so young, but he was so into it, yeah. And he was just like, they- he, was like he was like, do it, dude. That's so fucking. When I showed him the speedo, he was like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, dude, how what is that? I don't even know. Twelve years ago, something like that. Now and. And what, 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 I think it was 2000, because I remember when I first got that job to write with you on it in the first iteration of it. That was, uh, I was 2011, I think, or 2012. I think it was 2011. I was going to say. 2020, had, maybe. Tw- 2011 sounds. Yeah, 2010 or 2011. And how old is the kid now? Bieber? 28? 48, yeah. He's 40, 48 <laughs> years old. So tw- he was, you think it was, mm, yeah, 2011 maybe? Yeah. So yeah, he was just about 18 or something like that, or wow. 17 or 18 or something like that. So you have him, you have a, a, a international pop star being like, this would be really funny if he did that. I, I mean, he was, some he, he was egging me on. It was fun. And it, you know, I'll give you- And you're doing it for the show. No, it was for the show. So I didn't give a fuck. I knew I looked pudgy. I knew I was like out of shape and shitty. And I was like, I, my, my little penis and these really tight Speedos. <laughs> and I just didn't give a fuck at all. It was just like, wow. it, just because it was so, and then they tased me off of there. And I thought, I actually, you know, what's so annoying. I was taking a piss after that in the bathroom while the show was still going on and I'd just been chased off stage and I thought I'm gonna make it <laughs> I swear to God on my life I literally thought I'm gonna be okay like I'm gonna make it wow I just that was my first gig and I was like so still scared of like you know what what next or what, what what's gonna happen but that gave me some assurance that I was like Jimmy laughed they liked it I'm uh, national it, TV yeah in my mind I was like I'm gonna be okay wow dude <laughs> I hate to touch. No, no, you may not sit there. <laughs> 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 Go ahead and, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I don't. You know, no, you don't. Come on, seriously, yeah. It's like a jump. Careful. What are we doing? All right, I'll get no. What are we doing? Is this. Let me tell you a quick Bieber thing. Yeah. Uh, people have their own opinions about Justin Bieber. Fuck it. The kid's a hit maker, by the way. I think he's incredible. He's, he's a way more brilliant uh, songwriter, I think, than people give credit people, for. Because people, people don't know what he's contributed to. Uh, they know to. what they think they know. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, who gives a shit? Um, I love when old guys are like, he's shit, a little brat. You're like, oh, oh yeah? yeah. Give, I'll give you 10 million <laughs> when you're fucking 16. See what happens. You idiot. And then, but anyway, over the years, he's always been a good kid and never big time me. Yeah. So someone so famous. Oh, cool. I've been big time by guys fucking 
bullshit like that aren't that are remarkably unfamous that big time me and i'm like oh wow well just you're like oh i guess fuck that guy i guess yep but that kid he's always been a good always been a good kid and did the right thing good guy good man but we were at ufc whatever with joe i was like on the road with joe and doing shows uh and we go to UFC the next day. We would do a show, and then the next day we go to UFC. What a combo of oh man, it was, aw- it was awesome. And then you know, I'd sit on the floor with him. I'd sit right behind him. Oh For UFC God. fanatics, it's like heaven that, on earth. That seat is truly the best seat to be. Yeah, right? behind Joe. Other than dude. commentating or being in the ring. Yeah, no, I'm. Well, I don't want to be either of those. In the ring, fucking no thanks. Okay, well I've got plans because Friday, 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 Santino We're fighting. Ray Santino. Oh. You're going down, dude. The doctor checked me in and he told me I'm loco in the cabeza. You don't stand a chance to you because because I got the computer that my friend jerked All off right, on. Thanks, Adam. We go right back to the feet again. <laughs> dude, they cut him off again. I was gonna do the But guy. I was behind the I was behind the uh I was behind Joe yeah. and I saw there was all sorts of celebrities out. And um yeah, that's probably like other than the Super Bowl or big NBA finals. Like big, that's big fights. Celebrities come out, and Dana everyone. loves to have them on the floor. Oh yeah. And I saw Justin, and I thought, nah, you know, I'm again, like me again with BJ. It's like I don't need to go say hi. Man, nah, I don't want to fuck him. Fuck yeah. him. It's all right. I don't want to bother him. Yeah. But I walked by to go to like to, to the underground to go get drinks and food, and um, I walked by him enough where I, or walked close to him enough because of the crowd. And I grabbed him on the shoulder and I go, you're not allowed to sit here, sir. And his security like gets like right away, got tense. And he looked up and he Great goes, bit, by the way. and he goes, oh shit. And he stood up and gave me the biggest dap and a hug. Awesome. And I was like, oh, good kid. Cause for a second I thought, what if he, uh, yeah, what is, if he, he just, is he going to be a dick about it? Oof, yeah. What if he just goes, I can sit here, man. Not funny also, by the way. Yeah. And by the way, it wasn't that funny. So that would have been valid. No, that's the move. <laughs> no, I lo- but I was just fucking, just cause I hadn't seen him in a couple years and, and he was really sweet. But then also the funniest part was, you know, as I then walked away, there's always a couple of like, uh, you know, how do I be nice about this? There's always some like, uh, you know, women who get to go to those things because yeah. they're just stunning. Yeah. And they're like around. Oh, yeah. And you're like. Like seat fillers for award shows. But they're mega babes. Yeah. They're like of unbelievable. They're, yep. uh, what's a, what's a, they're like. So they're like just like fight floozies. Oh. Yeah. So friends of the show. I don't even know who. Yeah, Dana probably knows. Roadies. Dana probably knows a bunch of people who invite these beautiful young women in every yeah. city because they look great. Like, yes. I don't know. I'm making it up. He's adding to the whole show. But of the they experience. were all like, "Who is that guy? How does he know Justin?" I can see them all being like, "Oh who, yeah, who's that?" Yeah. But then I, I, a piece of me comedically, I didn't do it, but I wanted to turn and be like, "I'm, I'm gonna let you down. I'm a nobody, and <laughs> this is just because I knew him when he was a child." Like in my Hilarious. mind, I wanted to just be like, "This is. I'm not. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I don't own anything." Yeah. I don't have a jet. <laughs> I'm going to get free burgers, so don't uh, don't jump to any conclusions. I will be shoving most of them in my pants. I'm also married and gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do that math. Yeah, he Bieber. That's so uh, great that he. He's just, a good kid. Yeah, I ran Who's into big him. Big time to you, by the way. Well, let me go quick Bieber story, and then I'll get to that Bieber uh, story. He was at. Um, by the way, there's always a a show probably that exists for some celebrity like that where it's just stories that they have about the person that they either from a personal hang oh, yeah. or just run-ins. Yeah, it's like the Bill Murray uh, lore. Yes. Everyone's or, had a Bill Murray story. Or if you've ever been an extra on a set and you've got that one extra that is just like, when I worked with Julia Roberts, she <laughs> on Notting Hill, um, you're like, you're when you were an extra, right? Well, I played the hill, so I, I, <laughs> pretty dude, integral part. My, I, my buddy was first ID to get me my SAG card to do, get the vouchers. Three days on this uh, Matthew Broderick, Britney Snow movie about gambling. Shot it at the um, L.A. Hollywood Park Casino. What's it called? You know what it is? Yeah. Wait, Broderick was like a gambling Yeah, what addict. is it called? I can't remember. I know what this is. Like the 20, 21 Jonathan or something? Not 21 Jonathan. No, it's, uh, I don't know. That's yeah, definitely not that. That's a guy that you just talked to on the internet. <laughs> That's your grinder date. You're quick. 21 Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> when are you done with the podcast, Adam? I'll be out when I'm out, Jonathan. I scream extra hard to prove to him I'm not that into it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some space, dude. Or I'm going to fucking back off. Back All right, off. So you back go, in. You go to Hollywood Park Casino. You yeah. do this background. Three-day vouchers. And I, it was my first experience around extras. Background artists. Yeah. Yeah, we don't call them extras. Hey, man, anymore. and full on respect for the people that were grinding and putting in the time. Yeah, but just like in the show extras with Ricky Gervais, there's a couple people that truly are like the 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 goats of that world. The 
They've been, they've, they're seasoned. They're just yes, like. Yes, they've been doing it for 10, 12 years. They see yeah. someone walking around being like, I'm fucking starving. And they're like, lunch ain't going to be here for another five hours. <laughs> That guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The guy that also is just like, and then and then he's got food in his jacket. And and he's like, <laughs> you don't pack sandwiches, you <laughs> die. You want a Quaker Oats granola bar? <laughs> I got Chewies on the right, Nature Valley on the left. Now these are gonna get fucking <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> They're gonna be a cleanup, and makeup's gonna have a shit show with you. Who but, did? Who? What comic had that joke about Nature Valley granola bars? Oh, I don't know. It Harry was Coleman. A, it, it, it was a great joke, and it was about like, <laughs> oh, it's not my joke, by the way. Uh, yeah. But it was a great joke about he was like, uh, he's like uh, <laughs> searching for in his pantry. He was like, uh, I got to run. It was like, oh, I don't really want like a, I don't really want like a bag of chips. I, I don't want this. And he's naming all this stuff, and he goes, oh, good. Nature Valley, good. I want a granola explosion in my car on the way to work. <laughs> It's so true. He's like, he's like, it's in places where you can't get to, and yeah. neither can it. That's so he's like, funny. He was talking about having like a flat, like a flashlight, and you know, you're cleaning out your car, and you're like, there's so much granola in between my seat and the fucking rail. <laughs> it's true. It is an it's an accident waiting. Never to have not it. an entire. God, I want to know who that was. Accident. I can't remember. Yeah, it was one of our guys from like our generation. I remember oh, when, we, like, there's a couple of startup jokes. That will always stay with me. And I'm going to do yours right now. Okay. To this day. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of startup jokes. Back in the... Not when we... St but in the beginning... when we would do the improv you shows. You had a joke that was about Folgers' <laughs> oh, yeah. slogan was, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your car. No, I pause and go. And I eh, said... Is it? And, yeah. and you said... And you said, is it really? I yeah. think the slogan should be, the best part of waking up is not dying in your sleep. I loved that joke. Wow. That was one of my favorite jokes that, wow. that you had ever told over all the years because it, <laughs> the first time I heard it, it lit me up. I was like, oh, this guy's got a great sense of humor. Because I think that's one of the- Goofy. Uh, you were doing that at the, at the beginning of when I first started meeting you. Oh, yeah. That was, I mean, that was a part of the, uh, you know, the five minutes, the eight minutes, the 10 minutes, the 12 minutes. It was just a- I, a, I knew your brain worked well. I knew when you said that, I was like, oh, he's got a funny brain. Yeah, because that, I mean- a It's a silly, little dark, but it's very totally. silly. Yeah, yeah. You know what's so funny is I did Last Comic Standing once at the very end. I did it once too. Where'd you do it? Here? The improv. I tried it here. I, I Auditioned. I, yeah. I, I mean, I waited on fucking Melrose. Outside you didn't get in. Siegel. We got in, but like it was like at the end, they had already chose. It was already over. Okay. So the judges were Ant, Kathleen Madigan, Correct. and Alonzo Bowden. Correct. And my manager at the time, uh, I mean, I don't know what, what I, I was, I mean, maybe two years into stand-up. Who was Maybe it? three. Jonathan 21? Who was your manager? <laughs> uh, this guy, Tucker, at uh, Three Arts. What a name. Yeah. And, Tuck Dog. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, he had all the human giant guys and just was trying to, I guess, you know. Love those guys. Develop me, maybe. And, and so he's like, I got you on this last minute, like an hour before. He's like, get out on the improv. You're, gonna go, you're, you're the last one. Ugh. So I was like, holy shit. I'm not ready at all. I, I've got this Folgers joke, a few other ones, a, a, a dark joke right up top where I go, this feels a lot like my little, little uh, this feels a lot like my Little League games because <laughs> my dad's not here. It would always get that response. And then a couple, <laughs> oh, and then my dad going, <laughs> and I go, you made it. Uh, and so, and then I would do the Folgers joke. And so I go into the Folgers joke. And again, in a three minute set, there was no good transition. It was, you had to so be, I, you had I did to like bah, a bah, dad bah, thing. Bah, bah. I said one thing. I said like Alonzo Bowden, some, something to him, whatever. And you, and they rush you in. There's somebody outside. He's like, okay, okay. So when I say you're, you're just going to go right in. So when I, when, when I, you look at me, Hey, Hey. And then you're going to go right in. And I was like, okay, okay. I was just standing right outside the improv door. And then he just, and then he goes, okay, so you're going to, and then the door just flung open. He goes, fucking go. Yeah. He shoved me in, <laughs> camera, lights. I run on the stage, almost tripped, ran. You never run to the stage. It's always, no. they call your name in any show. You gingerly walk saunter, up. Don't say that word, please. You saunter up there. You don't need to step on my people like that. Don't cancel me. <laughs> gingerly. <sighs> The good cheese comes out at four. <laughs> <laughs> the first guy? time on set. And so, uh, so I, I run up to the stage. It was already weird. And I remember, Adam. I think Ant even made a comment about my run. He was like, oh, you got up here quick. And I was just like, yeah. yeah. So I made the dad joke. I launch into the Folgers joke. And Kathleen Madigan stops me and just goes, oh. So I do the, the best part of waking up uh, is Folgers and Cup. I go, eh, is it? And she just goes, a Folgers joke? What is it, 1986? And I go, funny. <laughs> I go, ah, 
Yeah, I don't know. I was just trying to fucking I don't do know, just three trying to be a comedian. Just trying to do three minutes at the end of this, which Kathleen. is clearly not gonna make any part of the show. Nah. Unless you're using me for the bloopers and goopers. And so uh and uh and so <laughs> then um and so then Alonzo, to his credit, and I told him uh, this as soon as we became homies, I go, You fucking stuck up for me because Alonzo goes, eh, he goes, it's probably more of the joke. Come on, let him finish. He goes, Do you want to finish the joke? I go, Nah, I think I think that was pretty much it on that one. And then he goes, "What else he got? Let's come on, f- finish it up strong." Lonzo's the man. Yeah, and so I did a couple more things, and uh, but at that point, I mean, the confidence was pulled. Gone. That was the inherent problem with that show. You know, that show fucking sucked, and and fuck fuck that whole the idea is insane of like we can have comics judge another comic. Yeah. On 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 minimalistic material, and then they also producer the reality show they bait. One of the one of the one of the judges is nice. One of them's a mean guy, yeah. and the other one's just trying to goof it up. Like I mean, you, that that's my that was my inherent issue with the whole thing. It was like, well, this isn't. Also, no offense to any of those people, but you know, every time they had a judge on there, you're like, this is a marginally successful comedian. I know it was yeah, it sucked. Two to three years in, there there should be an, and I feel like there is a communal, supportive, overall competitive like in any job with stand-up right where people are like good for you they want you know support the success and the achievements and then there is a competitive nature but with something like that i just was so baffled at like lady like you got it like you're up here on you're behind the desk you've you're doing like to have any sort of especially i was the end of the day i was like i remember i called putting right after that and i was like i think this is fucking because it was like gut-wrenching to a point to where i was like it took the fun out of it I was yeah. like, but I had to remind myself and, and putting, you know, God bless her was, the bat. was just like <laughs> the bat baby, the big, yeah, dude, she, she big was just like, tip. she was like, fuck that. Don't let that define whatever you're going to do. And Fact. that was one thing. And she goes, that was one opinion. She goes, also, she's like, you just got going with this. You don't fucking know. You have so much more to like, this is one stop it's, on the This fucking, isn't over. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this it, it, honestly though. But when I, you can't see that, you're no, so. No, I know it's really hard. Yeah. I do think when you have your first failures, it is the most. And it was the first taste of having someone a professional, because up at that till that point, I'm doing the UC Irvine shows and whatever, and and feeling like I'm, I'm you know maybe getting a little bit of confidence and 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 mojo going. So to have any professional actually see you and go, <laughs> what is it, 1980? And you're just like, <laughs> I don't know, it might be. <laughs> I, f- I wish it was. I wish it was because I'd be four and I wouldn't have to <laughs> fucking be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This would hurt a lot less as a kid. I wouldn't understand any of it. I wouldn't understand why you're so joke. No, but you know what's so funny is like she, I I really like, and I've always liked her too. She was Mm -hmm. one of those people from that generation of Comedy Central. Yes. That we got. So for her to hurt your feelings like that, hurt even more, Kathleen, say sorry. I saw her at the airport like five years ago and I thought about going up to her just randomly being like. She was a great writer. I mean, I haven't seen her in a long time. I mean, great comic. I mean. You wanted to say something, you wanted to go up to her and be like. I don't know. Just let her know for what, like, but and you know, I'm not that guy to be like. Hey, just so you know, in 2000, yeah, you you hurt my feelings. 2008, I felt real bad for a day or two. She was like, I was on Quaaludes that whole taping, you know. <laughs> totally. What's your? What's you were your, there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. What's your go-to? What's what are you eating at the airport? What? Okay, so look, mm. as we've grown in our careers of yeah. airportness, uh, you way, know, way less shitty. I mean, I'm still. See. I always fluctuate. I feel like I'm in pretty good control of my eats and treats at the moment. Um, but at the airport, it used to be a real bad because I just would we show first up. Started touring, dude. I, show up hungry oh, and I'm eating all of it. Yeah, and and I mean, dude, grabbing a. I remember I was in. I want to say Cleveland once, and I grabbed. No, no, you weren't. I want to say I was in Michigan once. No, 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 no. no. I want to say I was. Four and I was <laughs> doing stand up with Kathleen Madigan. No, I was the best part of written <laughs> up to put the dinner up. No, like put this guy on fucking TV, dude. There's a I made a sketch real quick of that uh bit mm-hmm. with John Renitsky oh, on you YouTube, did? fully produced like five camera special effects. It's basically a spoof parody commercial, The Folgers, where John look it up on YouTube, Adam Ray Folgers, John Renitsky. He uh he's in it's it's the the whole beginning coffee whatever we even had rewrote the song and made it a little different so he wouldn't get sued you know and then uh, and I um it's a whole opening scene shot beautifully of like the the next morning after a party and then you see John wake up in bed and stretch his arms and I open the door and I I have a tooth missing they blacked out <laughs> my tooth and I go I go we made it and John goes yes and then a girl wakes up next to him and I go. Ooh. And I sit down next to the bed and then she turns over and I go, 
court? And John goes, you two know each other? <laughs> and I go, yeah, we we dated for two weeks. And she goes, three years ago. <laughs> and I go, still? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and then it's a whole thing where John goes, I go, how do you guys know each other? And John goes, oh. Uh, and he's like buck naked with fucking dirt. I mean, it's just really painted up. And he goes, he goes, we met on Tinder, right? She goes, yeah. He goes, I said, I like your dog. Do you want to fuck? And then she came over and I'm just sitting there with the tooth and I'm like, <laughs> and, then it, and then a whole bunch of dialogue. I get really angry and then it cuts to the Folgers jingle. Can Shout I, out to Renetsky. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Now we don't need to see it because you just did the whole fucking thing on my podcast. Say I'm sorry to my audience. Sam, my bad. My bad for the trade. <laughs> I'm having Fleming's flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> What are these butter squirp, squirp, squirp? The looping in your fucking. <laughs> if you ever, I don't think you've had a job where you've been that moronic like I was. Oh, well, to, well, I was going to say, I've been bullied and embarrassed by many a job. You've had a boss look at you go, hey, new guy, the fuck is that? I'll tell you, I'll tell you the biggest thing that made that, uh, 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 I can't even say some uh, of the words that are in it. Okay. But McDonald's, when I was working at McDonald's. That's right. You worked for the yeah. fucking Arch. Yeah, man. It's only a couple years ago. And I might be back. <laughs> If comedy keeps going the I way. say that all the time about Universal. I'm like, hold my claws. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy takes him. He's like, I'll hold on to these tight for you, Adam. You're like, won't be long. No, I, the guy, a guy just said some shit through the window. It was like a, probably a high school, like a teenage, Aww. like a high school, like probably junior or senior. Oh, through the drive through window and at I you? And I was a freshman. I was like a first year. Oh. Yeah, and I just got in the window. <laughs> I had just moved up to That's the a, window. It is a move up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was. For me it was. Uh but um but I screwed up. Yeah. I I screwed up. I I I had done the um uh, taking the orders and then I'd done filling bags as well. I done I mean I did everything there. And then, you know, we're going to have to put a big bleep over this just because it's for context. Fine. But he goes uh this, I I I I fucked up and he's like waiting there and he's like no fries. And I was like, "Oh shit. I, I'm sorry." And I, and he you can tell he was like cool. And he had two people in the car, and they were cool, and they were older. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like yeah. a junior to a freshman. You're like, this guy's the greatest. Yes, you know? dude. I didn't know you don't where want they to were. fuck up the order. I know. And then I, so I go get the fries, and I hand him the fries. He's like, these are fucking cold. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. Well, if you pull over, you know, we, we'll have to make new oh, ones. Then customers you know? always right. Yeah, customers always right. And he goes, uh, and he just go, and, and he just goes, whatever. We'll just take it. You freckle face. And I was just like, oh. And then he just drove away, and I was like, oh, man. this guy knows me so well. <laughs> <laughs> he read my t-shirt. It was just, it, I was just like, it, it, it was like one of those things where like, you're young and you're easily oh, uh, embarrassed. But I had that, I, I had embarrassment or bullying or like, not bullying, that's the wrong word, but like I had felt like shit from either my bosses or yeah. customers yeah. at so many of my jobs yeah. that when I got to comedy, I was like, bring it on. Oh, you just, the wall was. Fuck! I mean, you remember from the jump, like I, I, I'm going to suck my own little penis now, but like, I've always been pretty fearless in comedy on stage of like, I don't care. I'll double down on that from the get go. Because dude. I was like, if this goes bad, it's like, dude, I, I'm broke. I'm just, I'm, wor I'm trying. And if you don't like this, I'm, I'm going to work harder to make it better and better. But I just never, I think I got so much like, uh, go fuck yourself energy. Your voice has grown obviously in, yeah, in yeah, your, yeah. uh, in, in who you are on stage. My but, balls dropped. Over but the I, years well, ago. yeah, that was huge. And, um, but but yeah, from the get go, and that is one thing for young comics who watch this to like truly try to whether it's in you or not, like try to actively go up there with like. I mean, I tried to do this when I was getting going. When I started to recognize like things, like I want to be better at that. Try to like, since you know it's not going to be a, a a second nature thing yet. Try to you know apply some of those things when you go up there. And you always had that like seemed like that fearlessness, which of course comes with time and reps. Oh, big or, time. What you had prior to that, that that um, that well, it was made bullheadedness you... a little bit. Like right. I was just like, "Fuck it," I, I, you, you know. There's six of you in here anyway, and you didn't even come to see a show, so I might as well. I'm going to try. If you don't like it, mm. I don't lose any sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go home, write more shit, keep working this fucking muscle out, yeah, and also go get paid. You know, four dollars an hour at, at a job that's ripping my soul to pieces. How come I, you I, never do bits about uh, McDonald's? McDonald's. Or do you? Ah, uh, you know, I, I, it's not. I, I, so I don't there'd know. There'd be no reason for you to not do that, other than just like too much pain. Really? For real? No, 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 no. Whoa. No, it's just like it's in the. I, I mean, I had so many bad jobs. I should do a whole thing about fucking bad job, awful job. I mean, dude, I was a, 
I started, I, I used to, I, I was a babysitter for a, a severely handicapped kid in my neighborhood. And he, it was very tough. It was like really difficult. It was like weird to put that on me so young because it was really hard. I was like, this is kind of hard wow. to do that. Uh, and that was always like crazy pressure. Uh, and then I was a fucking basketball coach. I was a, I was a fucking lifeguard. I was a swim instructor. Never swam. I only swam in lakes when I was a kid. Like, I never fucking swam. I wasn't on like a swim team. So what? <laughs> they were like, can you teach little kids how to swim? I was like, I bet. And so I just did it. So then we, but you just faked. Yeah, I would just see what the other coaches and... did and I just copied gotcha. their, their itinerary. Gotcha. Literally, I would just be like, all right, we'll do down and backs. I, you know, and I was a <laughs> lifeguard, backs, basketball def- coach, a referee. You were I, a ref? Yeah, I was a ref for the YMCA. I worked at the Y when I was in high school. And then I did, <sighs> uh, I, I did uh, an after school program with handicapped kids where I was like kind of a stay after. That yep. wasn't really a job. I did all that. that. Was a, it wasn't a job. It was a, like, it was credits. And then I stayed even more because my girlfriend at the time was a year younger than me. And then I got out earlier than her, but I just stayed extra after mm. because I'd kick it with those guys. It was yep. super fun. Yep. And then also I was like waiting for her anyway. Yes. So I was like, I'm gonna go. so I did that. And the same time then I was doing, I was selling air duct cleaning and power washing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I would, would do cold calling. I wow. made more money for these, this cold calling company. For these guys, then they had a real adults doing it and the adults hated me because I would close all the time. And uh they bought me like a really nice, uh a really nice like going away bag for when I when I left to go to college and they gave me a bunch of money. But these two guys were fucking, you know, like scumbags. But they were but they genuinely they were like, You earned us a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I've done a million shitty fucking you, jobs. Do you look back at that and go, Thank God that I Everything that led me to that, that I had to do that versus. I mean, for me, it was money. I just wanted a job. But like, look at that. Like, but look at the work ethic that was instilled in you or, and the hustle that still remains today. Like, yeah, there's, it's, it's a true. direct correlation. Yeah, you're right. The, I, I mean, we like you're, the, you're the same way. A I don't, thousand percent. I, I, you've never stopped working. You're, you, you're a workhorse. You probably are, 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 you're probably, you probably work harder than even people see. And people do see that you, you are putting out a lot of content. You're always moving, you're always up to something. I mean, like, and you're probably working harder than that. I, I don't know how, I don't know how you do that. I mean, your, your ethic is high for work. You really, I feel work. like, yeah, I you feel work like, a lot. I feel like I, I, well, I always have, I just, I don't know, man. I, my mom has always said too, like, you're, uh, you got to sl- slow down, you got to whatever. And it's like, I remember working so hard to get to like, even like, let's say it was like know. right now. And she's like. Well, now you can slow down. I'm like, no, no, no. Now I got to turn up even more. That's right. And look, you hopefully get better at like managing your time, being picky about what you're doing so you can't like get more rest, which I definitely, I look back at at a certain chunk of time where I'm like, wow, I would go, you know, when I got to a point to like, let's say when I was, uh, you know, had a couple cool VO things and then uh, when I was on one season of CW's Mad TV, Google it. And you didn't see it. And so, uh, <laughs> and like doing that and then sets at night after a 14 hour shoot day, still the move and then, and then memorizing shit that night after the sets and then still trying to have a hang at the comedy club with people that you're like, Oh fuck. Wow. I'm finally in a, a circle with these people and blah, blah, blah. And like, well, well, let me stay and have a soda pop with them. And, and, um, and, uh, and just burning the candle at both ends. And I look back at that. I'm like, man, but I wouldn't trade for anything, but I'm like, same. But bonkers, and so you just, hopefully you get a little better and just like spreading it out. But like you will naturally with age, <clears throat> we have. I just always, uh, yeah, I, I think just coming from seeing like my mom once uh, with the single mom thing, doing four or five jobs to fucking so that I could like not feel, you know, be obviously somewhat poor, but at least, but so her doing that so I could have at least you know, bas- not have to not miss out on buying a basketball jersey or or um, or getting to go on a, a, if there was a trip or whatever. Right, school um, trip or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, um, but also, I I think just, and you're for sure the same way, once you are around all this enough and you understand that there are no fucking shortcuts. Yeah, none. And that you can't, none. and that the waiting thing, like to sit back and go like, oh, I like, God, I did this and I, Maybe like I, I, they saw, I mean, dude, when I, my first TV job, I think I probably talked about it. It's, I get uh, uh, shit for it when I do bring it up. But when I got According to Jim, my first TV job, uh, I milkman, remember. Milkman or some shit? What you <laughs> it was like the water boy. Yeah, water I boy. dropped the fucking two uh, jugs of water, by the way, during the live taping on the ground. And Blue, she was like, fuck. And like, they went everywhere and they had to clean it all up. I thought I was going to get fired. But I remember <laughs> getting that job and remember I, I booked it and I was like, here we go. Looks like Nothing. I'll be buying a mansion. Yeah, dude. 
for, for six years after. And then even after I got the heat and I came back and I remember Bobby pulls me up at the store, I was still getting fucking 1245 spots from Tommy. And I was, and there was a part of me because people would go, dude, you're in the number one comedy in the fucking world right now. You're still going up at 1245. I was like, yeah, whatever. But like people planting seeds in my head being like, I'd say something. I was like, I don't, I think that's not the move. And I never did, thank God, because I just was like, that felt so, to be like, Tommy, I think the movie's doing really well. Maybe I'm up at 11. But I remember Bobby, when I came back, goes, or no, before I left, he goes, hey, 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 congrats on the movie. It's awesome. Hey, hey, big time. Hey, doesn't mean shit. Mm. Doesn't mean shit. He's like, when you come back, you're still going. But I appreciate it, because he goes, you're still coming back. You're still going up at 1245. You're still fucking picking up the phones here. You're still whatever. And I was like, well, hopefully I'm not picking up the phone still. He's like, yeah. you're fucking. <laughs> that I want to cut out. He's like, I'm still going to throw pennies at you. Yeah, you no know? phones for me. Yeah. <laughs> he was throwing pennies at me as I left for the <laughs> you're airport. Still, you're the Wolverine Club. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, but, but in that, I do appreciate that he was like breaking it down to me. Because in all of this, especially when you're getting going, any sort of little outside voice of like, Hey, just to let you know, like the grind doesn't stop Never. because there was a little bit of me that was like, oh fuck, I'm going to be in this movie. And then like, I'll just keep popping up. I'll, I'll get in that Fig Apatow crew, whatever. Like you can't help but fantasize and you should, you should a little bit and then manage your expectations, be somewhat realistic. But when you're getting the first taste of it, you know, Tastes you're like, good. yeah. But so having Bobby, like a little bit of that. So anyway, he's always humbled people. If nothing else, <laughs> a little fucking asshole. Uh, but yeah, man. It, and but, also, your, but your work ethic has turned up, and as long as you're take care and uh, taking care of, uh, yeah, the old noodle, yeah, yeah. and giving yourself mental health breaks, because yeah. I think that's I, I know I that sounds like I'm being facetious, but I I learned that that you're like, oh, dude, you gotta fucking be able to step away, and otherwise you're gonna go nuts. You're real good at that now with finding. Oh, dude, I I golf and downtime and just yeah, because I fucking wanna I, I uh I'm trying harder. I'm still not that good at it, but it's like. Not to go over this up again, but the truth that people don't really know about this is like once you quote unquote make it meaning and what that is is a subjective phrase, but it's also about once you're making a living doing our career, yeah. the assumption is like, dude, you did it. Well, you're a billionaire. What are you fucking? But you're like, no, dude, I, I stuff I work super fucking hard, probably harder than before, yeah. ironically. Because now now I, I need to produce, I need to create, I want you to see, I want you to like see what I've been up to and working hard at. And so there's an idea that it's like, you know, all downhill from here, but you're like, oh no, it's like, it's a whole new mountain that you got to climb. Yeah. Every time I've done anything, they're like, good job, climb up there. And you're like, oh fuck. Yeah. And you have to do, it's a daunting thing, 1, but, percent. but um, you're doing a great job at it. Uh, you got another season of the Young Rock coming out. Please watch the Young Rock on NBC. Thank you. Please this watch that. This guy continues to kill it. If you haven't seen Pam and Tommy yet, check watch that Pam out. Watch Pam and Tommy. He's on that as the delectable, delicious, sexy, uh, <laughs> and also extremely accurate looking. Oh, thanks. I mean, honestly, it's the most Leno Leno I've ever seen. I met him at Flappers last week, and I walked into the green room, and I was like, I wonder if you've seen it. I walked back, and he looks at me, and he goes, oh, the guy who plays me on TV. I'm like, look at that. And you're like, it's Adam Ray. <laughs> My fucking name is Adam Ray. <laughs> Jay Leno. Fucking chin checking. I heard your phone is still. Kathleen told me a fucking That gives a whole joke. whole new reason to, or uh, meaning to chin checking. Uh, chin check Jay Leno. <laughs> you punch him? No, I was just I was checking out his fucking chin. All right, that's so corny. Uh, uh, listen, Adam. I love you. I love you to death. I love you so much. I want you to plug. Are, are you going out at all? Are you oh, yeah. So, so literally. This uh, comes out in a couple days. I love that. Uh, and I love you. The uh, Shits and Giggle Tour, as I've called it, started last week in D.C. Let's go. Every weekend, pretty much through. Um, through September. Uh, coming up, we got uh, Irvine, we got uh, North Carolina, we got Denver, Kansas City, Seattle, Arizona, bing, bing, Vegas, bing, bing, bing. Uh, Chicago, uh, going everywhere. Um, so AdamRayComedy.com. 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 Podcast about last night. Yes. Uh, Santino's been on, Sandra Bullock, Swartz, and uh, Melissa McCarthy, Dana Carvey. Um, Young Rock Season 2, NBC, Pam and Tommy Hulu. And there's a show called Gaslit on Stars that comes out. Uh, in April, and I play um, uh, Nixon's press secretary. Holy shit. Julia Roberts and Sean Penn star in it. And, um, don't know either of them. So Sean Penn is this guy that... Um, no, I mean, I don't personally, I don't know either of them. Penn's, I know their work very well. When I worked with Julia Roberts <laughs> on uh, four weddings and a funeral, she gave me the leftover calzone that she... Well, she didn't give it to me. I, I heard it. the rap gifts. <laughs> she buys everyone a Ferrari. Oh, my God. <laughs> this motherfucker talked about rap. Oh, dude. rap gifts, dude. Those guys, those, those insiders, they know fucking everything. Uh, he had a whole huddle. It was like the fucking Fonzie at the dance, dude. This well, guy, that was his. He was on. He was his moment. 
And oh. you don't want to douse that down, dude. Let that guy live. Oh, I loved it, Let dude. That guy shine. I I was like podcasting him. I was setting him up for stories. I was like. I bet you fucking like have seen a lot of shit. <laughs> have I seen a lot of shit? I cleaned up shit yeah. once time. Mr. Red, you know I'm that? Gonna need a I worked ride on home. the set of Mr. Red. I scoop horse shit for 14 days straight. I slept on it too. You're like, oh my God, I gotta go. Yeah. He's like, I gotta go. I got four <laughs> other shows I'm doing today. Can I get a ride home? Can I borrow 50 grand? <laughs> You're not taping this, are you? What? What? Everyone's gone at that point. There's one guy. I gotta go corner. to the track. I owe a guy. Uh, go to adamraycomedy.com. Shout out to Puddin, the bat, the B-A-T. I love you. You're the greatest. Um, we could call her. We end the show. Yeah. Yo, you want to you call her? Real quick? Call up the Just Puddin. Just real quick. Call up the Puddin and see what she does. And then we'll... Uh, yeah, the Puddin. She'll love this, dude. Here we go. What do you have her saved in your phone as? Mom cell. You great. do that in case you die and somebody's like, we got to contact somebody, right? I never thought of it like that. Yeah. But probably. Yeah, mom. Um, the bat. Nick, put it the bat in I there. Should I change it to put in bat? Put in the bat. Come on, Mom. Come on, babe. What time is it? I mean, no, what do you mean? It's West Coast. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, dude. She's, she's chilling. F- she's having a cocktail. She's getting ready to watch. She's lit right now. She loves, um, what is it, Highlander. Oh, it's been oh, Damn. Damn it. Damn. All right, you know what? I I, I love you, Pud. The bat, you're the, you're the, you're the, you know, they say people are the goat, but she's the bat. She's the head bat. I love that. The, the bat is, yeah. The bat. But, but bat was too, that's an acronym for big ass titties. Mm-hmm. Right. She's but it bat. also sounds like the female goat. She's the bat. Or just like the like the mom goat is the bat. Uh, okay, then you can just say, um, bat can also mean um, badass temptress. Uh, fill in the blanks. You can figure it out yourself. And shout out to Jason Potts for, um, for not, I guess, for not following through on what he said he was going to do <laughs> at the basketball court. What a weird threat. You never moaned about my mom's tits, dude. You're a bummer. Um, we end the episode the same way. Uh, look into your camera right there. Okay. One word or one phrase are, is going to close our episode, so make it good. Go ahead when you're ready. One word or one phrase? Yeah, right there in that, in that, <clears throat> in that lens. To quote my seven-year-old nephew after he told me a joke, that went, why did the chicken cross the road? Because he had to take a fucking shit. <laughs> Where'd he learn that F word? My brother-in-law, Durte, who's a white rapper. <laughs> he said, why? Because he had to take a fucking shit. And then I said, how does the joke end? And he goes, and this is how I'm ending the episode, crosses his arms and goes, like and subscribe. <laughs> In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers.